This is Concept 5 Notes, and we're going to be talking about molecular geometry. So before we do these notes, I think it's so helpful to do this activity. It's an online simulation. I think it's going to make it make so much sense, and then these notes are just going to kind of like fill in the cracks, okay? But for the sake of the video, we're just going to keep going. So a little overview of what I mean. So we talked about, we first introduced chemical formulas at the start of this unit in Concept 1, Intro to Bonding because they tell us what makes up a molecule or what makes up a compound, what's in it, how many atoms are there, what elements are they from, you know, that kind of thing. So like this picture is C6H12O6. The chemical formula is C6H12O6 for glucose, okay? But there's also structural formulas like we have pictured here, and this is glucose, and it's just like a 2D picture of a molecule structure. Remember, we're just talking about a molecule here because for we're talking about covalent compounds because an ion would create that crystal lattice, okay? So we're talking about looking at something like glucose here. This would be a chemical formula. This would be its structural formula. But this still isn't that accurate because molecules are three-dimensional. And so that's where molecular geometry comes in. It's to show the three-dimensional nature of molecules. And we introduced Vesper theory um, in concept four. It helps us to predict the shape of molecules. So I want to go over it again. VESPER stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion, and oftentimes we refer to VESPER theory as the electron domain theory. But what it states is it's a tendency for electron pairs to be as far apart from one another as possible because valence E are repulsed by each other. And the reason this is also known as the electron domain theory is because this is affected by electron domains. So electron domains affect the overall shape of the atom because every electron domain wants to be as far from the others as possible. So what is an electron domain? It's just the space that are, is occupied by electrons. And a couple of things qualify as a domain. It could be a bonding pair. So electrons shared in a single bond. It could be a lone pair. It could be electrons not in a bond. It could also be multiple bonded pairs of electrons. So in what you see in a double or triple bond. So a double bond is just one electron domain and a triple bond is one electron domain. Okay, so this is going to help us predict their shape. And again, double and triple and single, they're all treated the same as just one electron domain. So using this theory and the idea that these domains don't wanna be near each other, we have these molecular shapes. And so we're gonna go through some of these shapes that I want you to know, and I'm gonna give you um, examples of them and we wanna be able to predict them. And I think the easiest way to keep up with them is to know how many electron domains they have or if they have specifically have any lone pairs. I think that really helps to determine the shape. So first is linear. So this orange is gonna be a central atom and you can see two off of it. That's when you just have two electron domains off of that central atom. So examples of this, if you were to draw O2 or draw HCN, you would see this is a linear shape. They're as far away apart from each other as possible, according to Vesper. Trigonal planar, that's three electron domains. It's going to look like this. Examples are if you, drew, if you drew boron trifluoride, that's what this would look like. Tetrahedral is four electron domains. And so that would be CH4, which we've drawn several times, carbon tetrahydride. That would come off in this tetrahedral shape. And in person, we're going to look at models of this online. We're going to look at models in person, like three-dimensional things, not just pictures. So that's the easiest way to really see it. Next, we have five electron domains. If you see a pattern here, two, three, four, five, uh, is trigonal bipyramidal is what we see here. That's like phosphorus um, pentachloride. And then octahedral is six electron domains, like sulfur hexafluoride. And some of you may be thinking, well, how could there ever be six off of it? Because if each of these, you know, electron domains at a minimum represents, you know, two valence electrons being shared, that means the central atom right here has 10 at a shared with it. And this one has, you know, um, 12 shared with it. Remember, octet rule is for stability. Most follow the octet rule, but not all. And so these are examples of where we see like phosphorus and sulfur are going to have access to way more electrons than they need. Um, but these compounds can still exist. Okay, two others I want to note. We kind of went through these different domains. These get a little bit more specific, and so I wanted you to be aware of these. So 
You can also have a molecular shape that's bent. And bent have four electron domains, but specifically, those domains are two bonding pairs. So it could be like a single bond here, single bond, and then two lone pairs of electrons. This is what we see happening with water. So oxygen's in the middle, you have a hydrogen and a hydrogen, and then you have two lone pairs of E on either end here. This creates this bent shape. We also see um, with four electron domains, another variation is called trigonal pyramidal. And this is where we have three bonding pairs and then only one lone pair. This is what we see with N H3, nitrogen trihydride. Okay, so I wanted to make note of those as well. I also want to make sure that you note that larger molecules often have evidence of multiple molecular shapes because they're made of such a lot of different small molecules. So we see that in biology when we look at macromolecules and things like that. So I just wanted to make sure you knew it's not always just this simple, it never is, but we're only gonna be looking at simple molecules for our purposes. Now, you can also draw these three-dimensional structures. Obviously, they're the easiest to understand when you're actually holding something physical that's 3D, but there's certain notation that you can use in order to draw. So for example, we said carbon tetrahydride is tetrahedral. Um, it has four electron domains. Um, they're all bonding pairs. They're all gonna be treated the same. So if you were gonna draw this, you draw bonds that would be lying in plane with your paper as solid, and then ones that would be going behind the plane, so away from you, get this kind of dotted structure, and then ones coming towards you get kind of this triangle. Now, if you're in my class, I'm not gonna make you draw these. This is not something I care about you drawing, um, so don't worry, but I know other people listening who have different teachers may want them to know how to draw this, so that's why um, I included this in here. Also, I want to say, I, my students, we're not covering hybridization. Um, for VSEPR theory, it's really only looking at the shape of molecules, and hybridization is something that really takes in consideration their orbitals too, which is something we call, talked about in Unit 3 Electrons when we talked about electron configurations and orbitals, but I'm not going to cover that either because I, again, just want you to focus on really knowing these shapes and understanding them and knowing them well. Okay, so we're going to do some practice problems right now that will help you kind of understand you know, what this would look like on an assessment. So um, these are three molecular compounds. I want you to draw their Lewis structures. Then from there, list the number of electron domains and identify if any of those electron domains are specifically lone pairs. And then from there, predict what the shape's gonna be. Linear, tetrahedral, bent, that kind of thing. Okay, so I'm gonna skip over this so that we don't see all the answers. And then in class, I think this is gonna really help you see why this matters. We're going to do a real-world uh, molecular research activity. It'll be short. Like, it's not going to be this giant project. But I think it's going to really help you see how this applies to the real world. All right. That's concept five.